Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to another episode of FTL. Here we are again, and what are we going to be doing today, you may ask? Well, this is another mod challenge, as the title of the video would suggest. Today, we are trying out Dry Eagle's Ember Shard mod. Now, this ship has a couple very interesting things about it that differentiate it from other ships that you could find in the vanilla game. So let's quickly go over those, then rename this puppy and all of its crew, and then get down to business. Well, first of all, you might notice that it's a big yellow gemstone type thing. Very similar in design to the crystal, uh, crystal ships. This one, of course, being made out of amber. So now we've seen some ruby and some sapphire over here. We've seen the obsidian cruiser, and now we have amber as well. Also, our crystal crew are now made out of amber, which I believe changes any crystal crew. Yeah, so it doesn't just affect that one, obviously, because you can't just affect these four. But they are otherwise the same. They have the lockdown, lockdown power, they have, still have reduced suffocation damage, the same reduced movement speed, and the same increased health. Now, one of those things is very important to this ship, being the reduced suffocation damage. You may notice there are not a lot of rooms in this ship, and that none of them are an oxygen system. Not one of them will allow you to heal, or rather, at least to breathe. So instead, this medbay has been outfitted with an enhanced NG medbot, which has been renamed the Regenerative Crystals, which let you, apparently, Crystal Crew absorb the medbay's healing energy through their connection to the ship's hull, offsetting any suffocation damage. So basically what this does is it gives them exactly the right amount of health to take zero suffocation damage. It will not help people who do not have their reduced suffocation damage, though. So other crew that are not crystal will have to either hide in the med bay, or this room can be a teleporter. So when this room eventually is a teleporter, they can teleport onto the enemy ship and fight over there. There's also a tutorial for the ship hit cleverly hidden in the augmentations. We can take a look at this and it says that the ship has no oxygen, only a med bay and regeneration to exactly offset the suffocation damage. Our med bay is our life. If we don't repair it, we'll be doomed. And as such, fires and borders won't be as much of a problem because they can't breathe. Look at tutorial part two. They said that there is no air, and if we pick up any additional crew, they will only able to, they will only be able to stay in the med bay or teleport onto the enemy ship. Of course, these don't do anything. They're literally just information, which is pretty clever. Now, our weapons and things are also very interesting. The ship starts out with two layers of shields, three engine, four in weapons, two in drone control, and a point in the med bay, the helm, and the radar, which is quite decent as far as starting gear goes. But on the other hand, your equipment is not exactly what you'd be used to. We have two weapons called shard cannons, which both take two power, take 12 seconds to charge, only fire once, but pierce all of the shields. The thing is, they don't really do much damage. They can breach the room, but apart from that, they mostly just add a lockdown effect. So these are basically lockdown bombs. They, they put crystal along, all on the inside of the walls, locking anyone in or out, but do no actual damage. You can suffocate people to death with them, though, I believe. Also, your heavy missile launcher is a very interesting weapon. According to the description, it was developed during the Crystal Zoltan War, and this devastating weapon packs enough punch to take out a Zoltan shield in one hit. However, it cannot pierce conventional shielding. It costs five missiles to shoot it. <laughs> it shoots one missile that does eight damage. It takes 20 seconds to charge, three power, and five missiles. This is basically not a weapon you're ever supposed to use. It's just designed for smashing through Zoltan shields, and if you need to, you have these drones already, which I'm going to get to in a second, if you need to, for killing unmanned drones. Your hunter drones down here are also fairly interesting. They're basically a boarding drone, but instead of costing three energy to fire, they only cost one, and they fly a little bit faster, so they're a little bit harder to block with the fence drones, which is kind of nice. But that's a whole lot of stuff we've just talked about. Let's rename this thing and actually try it out for ourselves. So what are we going to call this ship? We're going to call it the VSS Titan, and we're going to name our four crew after the Titans. So who are we going to have? Well, let's have Hyperion. That's always a nice Titan name. These are, of course, based on the Titans in Greek mythology. We're also going to have Cronus. That's a good one. No, nope, not rename, except. There we go. We'll take Rhea as well. There we go. And Oceanus. Nice, good, classical name. There we go. So our Titan crew is ready to try their best against the galaxy. We'll see if they can actually manage it this time. So, here we go. Of course, we are playing on normal. Let's jump right into this. Alright, so the data we carry is vital for the remaining Federation fleet. We'll need supplies to make that journey, and we'll need to make sure we explore everywhere we can before we move on. So let's power up some of these systems and get ready to do battle. 
probably go with one less than the engine, so we power up the Hunter. Also, something else interesting about this ship we should take a look at before we really get into it, is that the upgrades don't really cost what you're used to. No. For example, looking at the shields here. Level 3 shields cost 80 and 90 scrap instead of, I believe, 40 and 60. Possibly higher than that. I think it's 40 and 60, though. Level 4 costs 100 and 120 instead of 80 and 100. We have in the engine bars 30, 40, 50, 60, and 60 for these levels instead of going up to 120, which makes the engines really cheap. So we're definitely going to be buying all those because it's incredibly, incredibly low cost. Our weapons go up pretty standard as far as I can tell, but they're still cheaper. Drones have an interesting, weird thing going on. A limit of five power bars. They have, well, that, 30, 50, and 50. Our med bay, both upgrades cost 50 scrap. This is just weird. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. It's, a, it's an interesting little change that I've never actually really seen done so much. Full recharging of all the costs. But it seems to enforce changing up your engines, so I guess that's what we'll end up doing. You now what we're going to do first here is we're going to jump over to the store maybe? No, we'll wait till the second store in the area if we can find one. Because what we can do is, we can actually sell these tutorials for about 5 scrap each, which is not bad, I mean it's free money, and it will get them out of our inventory, which means if we get new things, we can put them in, no problem. Here we find a small rebel, sh small rebel ship nearby. It seems to have been refitted for transport rather than combat, and doesn't seem to want to engage us or our ship, so we're going to try and take it without their permission. Demand the surrender of their goods, go! We prepare to secure their cargo by force. And they do not want to fight us and are trying to escape, but that's not going to happen today because we're going to fill them up with hunter drones. Go, my drone brethren! We smash two drones into them, and we're going to use a shard cannon to lock their crew in that room. So hopefully, they're yes, they've sent both of their people down there. They've people, bleh, They no longer have anyone in the helm. I cannot speak any words today. Our level two shield to make sure that their weapons don't do any damage to us. And we have now locked them in there with our drones. These guys should be able to kill them long before that sh oh, oh, no, 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 you can't go back in there. Once the crystal wears off, yes, he will leave. Good. I was trying to say is they should be able to kill these people long before the crystals in the walls wear off. It is a very powerful weapon from a boarding standpoint, especially with the drones. Ooh, a free weapon. That's perfect. With the crew dead, we search the ship. We find military-grade weaponry inside and take a look... Take what, take what looks most useful? It's a heavy laser mark one. There was nothing better in there? Whatever. 14 scrap and a heavy laser mark one. Good. Unfortunately, this means we are never going to use the heavy missile launcher. <laughs> this thing is cool in that it, you know, is really powerful, but five missiles is an insane cost. Plus the 20 second charge time, the fact that it takes three power, makes it really impractical. Whereas the Heavy Laser Mark 1 does a little bit less power, a little bit less damage, for a lot less power, and doesn't use up all of our missiles. Definitely a lot more effective. Also, I probably should have moved my crew, shouldn't I? Cronus, you're getting weapons, Oceanus in the engines, and Rhea in the shields. There we go. Should have done that earlier, but we didn't take any damage anyway, so I can't really complain. Okay, so now we have 24 scrap, not enough to buy any more power, which is a fairly big deal in this early stage of the game, because we have a bunch of unused power slots from the very beginning. And our next jump, we find a space station which hails us, saying, Greetings! Your arrival is most fortuitous. We recently came across some extra drones. If you have some fuel, perhaps we can make a deal? Well, I might normally take this deal, but... Well, I wouldn't normally take this deal, but I might take this... Oh, excuse me, my hiccups. I'm crazy. I might have taken this deal if it wasn't for the fact that we don't have a whole lot of fuel and we do have a billion drone parts. So we're going to reject that offer and keep moving. Distress Beacon sounds like a good choice to me. Hopefully we find something good over here and can make some progress. And it's a fight! As soon as we arrive at the distress signal, shots are fired towards us. It was a trap! What do you know? A basic laser and a missile launcher. So I'm going to turn off that, turn on one of them, fire them drones, and yeah, we won't be able to do any damage to them with our heavy laser at this point because of the fact that, well, they're, you know, have a shield bar. And these shard cannons don't do a darn thing to that. But we should be able to lock them in here, no problem. And if we put points in the dodge, which we're going to do, turn off that shard cannon, I need that. We should have a pretty good chance of not getting hit too badly. They hit us in the radar, but the fire should go up before it does any real damage, and that should work out in our favor. These guys should suffocate before too long, just as long as this missile doesn't hit us anywhere important, like the drone bay. No, oh, that's even worse. We're hitting the med bay. Immediately emergency. Get in there. Fix that right now. All right, these guys are going to die momentarily, but that thing needs to be online, otherwise our entire crew will die. With the crew dead, we take five fuel out of their storage and also gather 19 scrap. Not bad, but please, please fix that. Good. Otherwise, you would have died. Now, unfortunately, since they already have a really high natural regeneration uh, from the regenerative crystals, 
They heal really slowly in the med bay. Our titans here are not the best at getting medical care. So we're going to send, actually we'll send these guys in to fix the radar whilst uh, Hyperion and Cronus get healed. But yeah, they very, very slowly heal at level 1. So you probably want to upgrade that to level 2 fairly quickly so you can actually heal at a reasonable rate. Because as it is, you'll be sitting there, sitting there healing all day if they take a lot of damage. Okay, back to your stations there, Crystal Gentlemen. The Amber Crew. Alright, power up our shields once again. We're going to buy a power bar because that will give us the ability to run our full engines, full shields, a weapon, and 200 drones. And our med bay, which is pretty, pretty good. Definitely an important thing to be able to do. And we will keep working our way towards our enemies, finding an asteroid belt here. A pirate ship was lying in wait inside the asteroid field and immediately moves in to attack us. Now this is a risk here. They can't really hurt us, although we might get hit by asteroids. But our hunter drones have a fairly high chance of accidentally going into their oxygen like so. Meaning we can't actually do a darn thing to them, of course. You just... What? What just... What just happened? <laughs> Did you see that? I'm a little bit baffled by what just happened. Our drone smashed in, was attacking the oxygen, an asteroid flew by, said miss, hit the oxygen bay, and our drone disappeared. What just happened? <laughs> that was the weirdest thing. Okay, I'm not really sure what that was all about. We're gonna fire another drone in there, because that one actually hit them in the ship. That was just bizarre. Can the asteroids, like, collide with them like they're outside the ship or something? Let's find another hunter drone in there and see if we can actually make this one survive. I should have fired both at once. There we go. Now they should join together. We can shard cannon them to make sure these guys are suffocating while dying. Good. And that should make their lives miserable, but that was the weirdest, weirdest thing. I do not know what just happened there. One of our drones just decided to cease to be all of a sudden. We're gonna take some hits from this. Oh, please no asteroids. Good. And the ion misses us. That makes it even su more survivable for us. And down goes the other rockmen. There are no more life signs remaining on the ship, so we strip it of useful material, getting a missile, a drone part, and 21 scrap. Two missiles, rather. I was going to just leave my drone in there and have him destroy their oxygen and watch them suffocate eventually, but that was the weirdest thing. I have to go back and watch that afterwards. That was bizarre. All right, well, we're in an asteroid field, so they don't really want us to upgrade here. We can, by hitting you, of course, but we're not gonna. We're gonna jump away, and we're going to hopefully find some more people to fight. Come at us, bros. And they've locked our engines. Once we arrive, our screen lights up with warnings. A nearby pirate seems to have advanced hacking tools and have tried to shut down our engines. Our crew keep them barely operational, and we move in for the attack. Alright, they got lasers and lasers and lasers. Two dual lasers, which means we're probably going to take a bunch of damage here. But we're going to fire the drones as per usual, and hopefully make them be fairly uncomfortable. We can use both of our shard cannons as well, which should give us the ability to lock down fairly important parts of the ship here. So we're going to shard cannon them in there, and we can put some more holes in other rooms. Please miss us. No, you're not missing us. And our oxygen is now broken, or rather our med bay, which means we're going to die if we don't fix it, especially Oceanus, who's now burning. Get out of there. All right, this is not what I was really hoping to have happen, but that's okay. Smack him in the weapons again. Make sure he suffocates as quickly as possible. Please fix that. Okay, our helm is now broken, but the med bay is fixed. Get back in there. Oy. Okay, you get in there. You get in there. Please try and do as much damage as possible right now. Alright, they've killed one of these guys. It looks like one of their crew has run away, which is not exactly ideal. We're going to have a hard time killing them if we can't actually go hit them. Ah, and our med bay's broken again. Please stop doing that. Please stop doing that. I can't do anything about it. Alright, we're going to shard cannon them in the helm, kill whoever's hiding in there. I can't chase these guys down. I thought he was going to fight us, but no, he's ran away. Our shield took another hit. This ship is, like, playing on the edge of your death all of the time. There's nothing you can do about it. And he already fixed the hole in the floor, that's true. And we lost our oxygen, our med bay again. This is not enjoyable. Alright, with the pirate ship disabled, our engines our, our engines come back online. We get two fuel and twelve scrap from them, which is not bad, but... Ugh, that was a fiasco. Alright guys, some, repair some of this stuff. You can go heal yourself after, it's going to take all day anyway. Alright. Do some repairs. Ugh. Getting hit in the med bay is literally a death sentence because your guys take so much time to repair it and dying while they do so. If they hit it one more time, we probably would have lost at least Hyperion, if not more of our crew. Alright, get them in there. Slowly start to heal them up. It's going to take all day, so I'm going to come back when they're all healed up, and then we'll keep moving. 
There we go. That took a little bit of time. Okay, we're back and ready to keep moving forwards here. We could buy a little bit more power, which might not be a bad idea, because that'll give us the ability to actually use our pair of weapons, or our heavy laser, or something like that. But I think we'll save up and get some more dodge, because it looks like if we're not dodging, we're dead. So, that's not fun. Let's try and avoid that from happening. We may actually go sell our tutorial panels as well. That sounds like a good idea. We'll go sell those off, get a little bit of free scrap here, and then we can keep moving. A transmission from the nearby planet indicates an outpost below which offers supplies to travelers. We send down an away party to check it out. And they have a 50 scrap teleporter. 50 scrap? 50? Okay. <laughs> we'll sell the heavy missile launcher, because we're never using that again. Sell the tutorial panels. There we go. 81 scrap. Well, I guess we're buying a teleporter, because that's insanely cheap. This is crazy. 20 and 40 to upgrade it to? That's... that's uh, cheapness, I can't not buy it. Okay. You'd have to be crazy to not buy it. What else can we do? We could buy a little bit of stuff, but I think what we're going to do instead is buy another power bar so we can actually run the thing without being able to not use our hunter drones. Of course, we can also be using our crew for boarding purposes now, but if they do have to come back here in a hurry, it's going to take them all like, a year and a half to heal, so we might have to wait until we upgrade our med bay to actually use them as a boarding party. But the fact is, the option is now there. Here we find the source of the distress call, a small research station where it appears a small laboratory fire has gotten out of control and is threatening to destroy the entire station. Their fire suppression system is not responding, so we're going to try and dock and rescue some survivors. We're not going to send our crew in because I don't want them to die. Dock and rescue the survivors. We pull up alongside the station and cut through the hull. We're able to rescue a few survivors, but many more are lost. One offers to join our crew, and we offload the rest at a nearby station, getting 10 scrap as a reward. We also got Jones and Engie. Well, you're not exactly what I wanted, Jones, but you're going to go hide in the med bay before you suffocate to a horrible death. There you go. You only lost nine health in the journey. I'm sure things will just get worse for you, chum. Well, that's fine. What are we gonna do here? We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five out, probably. We have how many jumps? One, two, three, four, five. It looks about right. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We could jump all the way along the line and just come across that way. One. Let's jump over here first. Bad decision-making is the best kind of decision-making. What do we have here? An especially well-armed pirate ship approaches us, saying, Hand over one of your crew members, and the rest of you can go free unharmed. Well, we could send one of our crew over to the slavers if we were idiots, or we could just say, No, we'll never surrender one of our crew to the slavers. We're going to fight you instead. We're going to fire you. Fire you. Yes, you're fired. Actually, this is true. Since there's no oxygen in the teleporter, we can't leave people to the brink of death before teleporting them back. Otherwise, they will die in transit. They have to be fairly healthy when we teleport them back. Hmm. Well, let's smash them with some drones. That sounds like a good solid strategy for anybody. Hit them in the face with the drones, and then shard cannon them so that they can't get the people out of there. Actually, apparently both of these mentors have decided that fixing that hull breach is the prime thing, rather than helping their rock crew member, who apparently they didn't like very much. Also, we just got hit in the engines, so that's not a big deal right now. <laughs> Seriously, these are the least helpful mantis I've ever seen. Alright, the rock has died now, so we're going to lock him in there with a big hole in the floor, or two. And things should be quite nice for us, quite shortly, once all those mantis die horrible deaths. We might lose one of our drones here, but it doesn't really matter, because, well, they're drones. We find a number of slaves in the cargo hold. They look at us questioningly, and one asks if they're to be released. We could use more crew, but we don't want to force them all to work for us instead. Well, now, here's a thing. We can get another crew, but I mean... Eh, I don't want a crew. I want money at this point. I guess we can take a Mantis and try and use them for boarding, but they're going to have a very low life expectancy here. Alright, demand the Mantis joins our crew, but release the rest. Bam. The Mantis seems fine with the orders, saying, I'm on board if it means we kill some rebels. We drop the rest off at a nearby station, getting two missiles, a drone part, and 22 scrap. Oh, okay. That's actually a quite nice reward, then. I didn't realize we get all those nice things with them. Get in there, guys. Get get in there. Okay. Yeah, we can't do any boarding actions until we get a better med bay for you. Otherwise, you're never going to heal. Okay. Now we're going to rush over there towards the exit. We have how many jumps? One, two, three. It looks like four. Let's jump over to the corner, then. Like complete fools. Lock ourselves into the course of action. Whether or not it's a good one, who knows? No. Oh. Nice reward. An abandoned space station circles a lonely planet. A quick check yield schematics for a drone, we bring it on board, getting 10 scrap and defense drone mark 1. Alright, well, that was a good choice after all. Got a defense drone to bolster our gear. Let's work our way over toward the exit. Over toward the exit before we get murdered. What do we have here? A mantis ship hails saying, Ah, fine prey, fine prey. We honor you with our most eviscerating arsenal. We sense a cloud to the silver lining and power up the weapons. Something is not exactly right there. Well, that's okay, though. We're going to blast him with some hunter drones. Pew, pew! 
Go, go, Robo Power! Of course, we're running through our drone supply quite quickly. Quite quickly indeed. Hopefully, it will not be a problem later on, but I have a feeling it very well may be. If we could get some kind of drone recovery arm, that would be nice. I'm not sure if that actually works on boarding drones because of the fact that they're in the enemy ship, but it'll be interesting to find out. I'm pretty sure it does. Pretty sure it does. That would make us a lot more powerful in the late game, because as it stands, we're going to be quite low on uh, drone parts after a fairly short while here. But down goes that, those dudes over there. There are no more life signs remaining on the ship, so we get three fuel, two missiles, and 21 scrap from them. Of course, these drones are also going to get less and less and less effective once the enemy ships have more people on them, but hopefully it will work out in our favor. 69 scrap would give us the ability to buy a little bit more engine power, which would probably be wise. So let's do that. Engine power, go. All right. More engines. Now, it looks like we're going to be just right on the time there. Right on the spot. And it's a sun. Oh, good. This beacon has been placed too close to a supergiant class M star. The ship will gradually overheat till we get out of there or die, and a pirate obli 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 oblivious to the danger of the sun moves in to engage. My English is just not happening today. Well, we can drone them. That'll keep them busy until the sun starts to murder them, because they have no med bay and no crew that's good at repairs or putting out fires. Of course, the danger is, if a fire starts in our med bay and immediately damages the thing, we're going to be in a lot of trouble here. So we're still going to need to kill them as quickly as we possibly can. So fire two drones inside each other, smack them in some different rooms, and then hopefully murder these guys before they can do anything to us. Their weapons aren't dangerous, because they only have a basic laser and a heavy laser mark 1, so they can't get through our shields, but they can lower our shields in time for a solar flare, meaning we'll take a lot more fire, because for some reason, the way the fire works in the solar flares is based on the la 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 number of shield layers you have, and of course, it took out our med bay, meaning these guys are probably going to die before they can fix it. There are no more life signs remaining on the enemy ship. We stupid at use of material, getting a missile, a drone part, and 20 scrap. Can these guys repair this in time to not die? I'm not convinced they can, but we're going to jump to the exit anyway to get out of the sun to not risk taking any more damage there. Do they make it? We've arrived at the Long Range Beacon, and when the FTL drive is charged, we'll be able to jump to the next sector. There's a black market hub here who wish to buy our missiles. If we have extra military-grade explosives, they'll pay us for them. Well, we don't need to use our missile launcher anymore, so we're going to sell 15 missiles for 45 scrap. There we go. This will help greatly, they say. I'm sure it will, for whatever terrorist activities you have in mind. We're going to heal up our med bay, though, because that will actually make it feasible to have these crew on our ship. I'll buy an extra power bar so we can keep power in it so these guys won't immediately be dead. Oh, suffocation damage does terrible things to the damage sound effects. But we have now got the ability to heal up these guys. They won't heal quickly, but they will actually heal. Of course, that means that if we want to heal our other crew now, we have to take them out of the med bay, which is going to make things even more pain in the butt. Ugh. Okay, well, I'm going to sit around and heal these guys for the next five minutes. I'll be back again in a second. So, see you then. There we go. It's not quite as bad as it was when we only had the level 1 med bay, but it's still a little bit tedious. Healing is not the most enjoyable thing on this ship. Alright, let's jump ahead to the next sector. We have two choices, and both of them are NG. Well, okay then. NG-controlled sector it is. So, we have an NG on board, which means you might be able to get a bunch of nice blue options here, but we'll have to wait and see. In NG space here, the Mantis have been threatening the NG core worlds. We should be able to stock up for our journey, which shouldn't be a problem. Let's jump to this distress beacon and see what they want. Do they want to give us some free goodies? I'd love that. Nope, we found a ship without life forms within a nearby dense asteroid field giving off the distress call. We're going to investigate despite the danger, because who knows, we might be able to find another crystal crew. Let's search for the ship. Nope! We find what appears to be pieces of a derelict ship coated with ice or crystal. However, before we have a chance to dock, a few asteroids get past our shields and partially damage our engines. We'll have to pull out. Meaning we took a bunch of damage. Five... Bleh, bleh, bleh. Words just not happening. Words, please. Cooperate with me a little bit here. What I was trying to say was... Meaning we took five damage and got nothing out of it. Keep working here. An advanced rebel automated ship remains stationed near a small rebel space station. Sensors indicate it's a storage vessel for military goods, so clearly we have to attack them to get those military goods. Attack that ship, and thankfully these rooms are all connected, so once we actually get the chance to get on there with our hunter drones, we should be able to take them out without too much trouble. Also, unless that bomb is dangerous, these guys shouldn't be too bad, but I bet you the one room that bomb hits will be our med bay and our crew will die. Because that's just the way FTL likes to do things. Smack him, smack him, smack him. Oh no, we hit our radar instead. That's quite acceptable. Alright, we're going to have to send someone to go fix that eventually. Not right now, though, because it's not a big deal. Of course, we can also use our shard cannons to make sure that no one can ever repair anything we do damage to. The way that the uh, hull breaches work here, if you hit a room with a hull breach, the ship can't repair it for whatever reason. Also, we're going to use our heavy laser for fun here, too. Turn that on, please. Thank you. And we'll be heavy lasering them in the weapons, first thing, because that will give us the ability to actually do some direct damage without having to rely on our crew to do it. Now they've destroyed the shields, anyway. Alright. 
On the plus side, these guys are doing damage there even while they're cloaked, so that's nice. Okay, here come some more attacks. Please miss us. Please, please. Awesome. The bombs have been missing, which is lovely. We're going to hit them in the cloak, I guess, next. There we go. Their weapons are mostly offline now. The mini-beam is not dangerous. Next shot's going in the helm, I suppose. Shard them somewhere else, maybe? Nah. We'll just let our drones do some damage there, and we will finish them off with the heavy laser, or whichever one kills them first. Either the drones or the heavy laser is going to kill them. And it was the heavy laser, what do you know? Down goes the auto scout, and we get 25 scrap from the wreckage. When we investigate the station, ooh, nice, we find that it's a storage site for various resources. We salvage three missiles, a drone part, 21 scrap, and the defense drone mark two. We're not going to be using that thing, of course, but we can very well sell it, and that might be very profitable. Okay, now we could try and power up our engines again, which would be nice. Getting up to level five is always good. Are these power bars, power bars more expensive? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. The, the changing prices makes it really hard to judge how expensive anything is supposed to be. <laughs> All right, what do we have over here? We have nothing. Looks like no, another free drone! Yay, free money! An abandoned space station circles a lonely planet. A quick check yield schematics for a drone, and we bring it on board. An intense scrap an anti-ship beam drone Mark I. That's a pretty powerful one if you plan to actually use it for offensive techniques. I don't know if we can make it across here. Hmm. If we run all the way up there, we're probably going to get stuck. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to go back and we'll work our way around this way. There's no reason to come over here just for a store anyway. Given that this is an NG controlled sector, there should be three stores on the map. A ship refueling station is stationed here and we can purchase fuel from them. Station stationed? That seems a bit funny to me. But whatever. Positioned here? I don't know. It would be better than that. We can buy some fuel from them for incredibly cheap, because two scrap for a fuel is an amazing deal. So we're going to buy that. Thank you very much. We're going to go ahead over that distress beacon in a minute, but first we're going to jump to this beacon and see if we can't get any goodies here. Anything for free here for us? No. Yes, more free things. An energy vessel hails us, saying, Identity? Federation? Outlier probability. Implies revival. Implies hope. Assistance suggested. They offer some supplies, giving us two fuel, two missiles, and 19 scrap. Well, can't say no to that. Although I should repair my radar before I go any further. I'm just begging for trouble by jumping blind here. Alright, fix that up there, guys. Fix that up. It's a very compact little ship. Probably meaning that halberd beams and whatnot will absolutely wreck it. But, <laughs> for what it does, it's fairly neat. Fairly neat. There's a lot of crew packed on this tiny ship, though. Alright, so, people are in position. I'm kind of disappointed there's no yellow line. The yellow line looks like it's, you know, ties the whole ship together, but it just doesn't go in this room. It's kind of disappointing. Whatever. Maybe it wasn't possible to do. Who knows? I don't do enough modding to be able to tell you how that kind of thing works. Let's jump over here, and what do we find? And by don't do enough modding, I mean don't do any modding. We arrive at the Distress Beacon near a small asteroid belt and find a ship with pirate markings partially crushed between two large rocks. They must have been illegally mining the belt without proper equipment, so we're going to try and save them by shooting at the rocks. We fire a few volleys at the rock, and it starts to shudder and break apart. Without shields, the pirate ship does take a beating, but eventually pulls free. Thanking us for our assistance, they give us a missile, a drone part, and 24 scrap, and are likely to be killed by us later when we randomly come across them. Because, yeah, we're evil. Alright, we never take surrenders, so if we find those pirates, they will be dead that time instead of this time. Let's jump over this way and see if we can't gather some more goodies before we run out of space. In space. We quickly come across a pirate in hot pursuit of an unidentified ship. We receive a transmission from them saying, Stay out of this fight and we'll make it worth your while. Offering us three fuel, a drone part, and 14 scrap. Well, we could try and be here and attack the pirate, which is what we're gonna do. Huzzah! The pirate ship stops pursuit and locks weapons. Well, we have 35% evasion right now, which is pretty darn good, and they only have two crew and no med bay, so these hunter drones are gonna absolutely wreck them. I should probably stop spamming two hunter drones at all times, but it's fun. So that's what we're gonna do. And if this guy comes in here and fights us, he'll die even quicker. Here comes the first missile. Please do not hit us anywhere important. And you hit us in the engines, which I have to say is not that important. Alright, please come and fight for your life. No, he's... What is he doing? Alright, lock him in there. And we're going to take another point of damage here, aren't we? Yes, we are in the teleporter, but that's okay, because the teleporter doesn't matter either. And this guy is probably going to last enough for them to fire one more missile at us before he dies. Yep, there he goes. Alright, and they're dead, and we took a hit in the shield this time. We're taking so much damage, it's ridiculous. The pirates are all dead, leaving the ship dead in space. We scrounge what we can from their ship before contacting their prey, getting a missile to drone part in 23 scrap. Well, the people we find thank us for the aid, saying that they're an arms dealer that usually only works with rebels, but considering the circumstances, they agree to make an exception for us. There's nothing. Really. <laughs> your, your great offer is a whole list of nothing. 
Ugh. Well, we'll sell the defense drone, we'll sell the beam drone. We're not going to be using those, given that we have good stuff here already. Hunter drones are amazing for their power costs. There's no point in selling them, and they only give you 15 scrap anyway. We will be using this to buy some repairs, though, so we're not literally sitting dead all the time. We'll go up to 20 hull. Pretty stable position there. We could buy a burst laser mark II, which is quite a nice weapon. I'm not sure. I guess that would be a good... Yeah, well, we could buy it for 80 scrap. We could keep the shard cannon in our cargo hold for now, I guess. Because that's a pretty cool weapon, too. But I'm just trying to think here what the best use of it is. Because if we had that, we'd actually have some pretty high laser firepower, which means we could be able to probably take out some weapons before getting murdered. Let's buy it. It's a bit expensive, but I think it'll help us in the long run, and it already has the same power cost as the other weapon in that slot, so it's not like we're get upgrading to something we'll be able to use for five days. Okay. Good, 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 good. If we want, we can turn those on. That'll give us some actual laser firepower. Four lasers is not bad at this early stage in the game. We might be able to get something out of it. Alright, crew have been healed up. I wonder if I can just run him back and forth through here to get the healing effect. It's only a level 1 heal. Oh, it seemed to have worked. Put it onto level 2, and he should heal up just from walking through there. Is that right? 125 health? Yes, 125 health. Good. Rhea, you're going to do the same thing. Cronus, you're going to head across. Rhea, you're going to walk back through. It should fully heal you. 124 health. Ah! There we go, 125. And everyone's back to full health. Awesome. Alright, we have to make some more progress here, otherwise we're not going to get anywhere. So let's keep jumping. We have two fuel left, two, yeah, two scrap left, which you could spend on something, but instead we're going to jump wantonly forward. And we find a nice blue planet with... Ah, Zoltan Researchers. If only we had been able to actually get that pod earlier. They say they're researching genetic distortion due to stasis sleep and prolonged FTL travel and ask if our crew has time to undergo a few scans. We agree to participate in their study, and after calmly lining up for the Zoltans to take readings, they give us 15 scrap, as well as some stiff cakes. Gotta love terrible cake. Well, we got some, and we're gonna make use of it. Get that deliciousness inside you. Alright, we find the distress beacon to a small asteroid belt where we find a small ship struggling to maneuver through the field. They message us, saying, Help! Our shields are down, and we don't know how much longer we can last! Now, we could try and shield our ship with ours and escort them out of the field, or abandon them completely, which is never a good idea, because it's a fairly good chance of them escaping and then being like, oh, we'll go tell the rebels where you were. This is generally not a good idea unless you have very little health left and can't risk getting hit. Or we can beam them aboard our ship, which is really a cruel thing to do, because we don't have any more room in our med bay. But we'll do it anyway. We're going to offer to beam them aboard our ship. Oh no, this is the event I didn't want to happen. They agree, saying that... Oh, rather, once they... Oh, my goodness, words. They reluctantly agree, and once on board our ship, they, we watch as their ship crashes against a massive rock. They thank us, but say that they don't know what they'll do without their ship. One of them claims that as the captain, he feels obligated to help us with our mission. I'm sorry, sir, Atreyu, you are going to die. I have no solution for you. You're just going to die. We're going to jump over here and then jump to the exit. There's no room for you in our med bay, which means you are doomed. I might throw you at the enemy ship next time we find one, but who knows. We jump into a sector filled with civilian activity. We scan the various advertisement channels while waiting for our FTL to charge and are intrigued by a grey market shipwright, offering to trade us three missiles for three drone parts, which is fairly good for us. We don't need the missiles, but more drone parts would be helpful. So we agree to make the trade, and we immediately jump again, hopefully preventing our crew from suffocating. We're going to lose a bit of space on this, ju uh, this jump here, but that's okay. I'm alright with that. We arrive at the Long Range Beacon, and what do we find there? We find scanners showing intelligent life forms on a nearby planet. No match for them can be found in the database, which means we're going to get another NG on board to die horribly. Let's investigate. We land a small shuttle in an enormous field, whose only occupants are small, brightly colored, six-legged, horse-like animals. Could they be that our scans picked up? Why, yes they could, but not all. Let's try to communicate peacefully, because this one, while you can get some money, also has a high chance of one of your crew dying horribly. And we don't want to lose any of our crystals, otherwise we won't be able to manage any of our stations. Let's try to communicate peacefully. Nothing happens. We try to communicate in every possible way we can, but they just stand there, silently judging us with their large, expressionless eyes. We prepare to leave. Alright, well, we're gonna lose our NG here, but we're gonna jump as fast as we can to the rock-controlled sector. He's gonna die while I'm talking to you about the end of the episode. Yeah. Alright, well, let's jump anyway. Rock-controlled sector it is. Here we go. What do we find here? Well... The rock people have a particularly aggressive stance towards alien races trespassing in their space. We should tread carefully here. Yes, we should! Pop into the ship menu here so he doesn't immediately die. This has been Vanguard of Valor, playing another episode of FTL for you on board the VSS Titan, with Hyperion, Cronus, Rhea, and Oceanus! And Jones, Roper, and the soon-to-be-dead Atreyu, but that's okay. Now, if you
you've liked the episode, don't forget to like the episode, and I apologize for the strangeness of the ship, but that's part of the interest of the mod. It's definitely not your traditional game, that's to be sure. Anywho, I will see you guys all next time, and bye bye